So what indicator can be used to identify the momentum of the market? Well, you can use the MACD indicator. How about to identify volatility? Well, we can use the Bollinger Bands to identify market volatility. Now, how about the trend? What indicator can we use to identify the trend of the market? Well, we can use something like the Vidya indicator, which I created a video about some time back. Now, imagine this. What if there was a single indicator that combined these three important market metrics into one cohesive system? That would be pretty great, right? Well, you don't have to imagine anymore because this is the Dynamic Price Oscillator by Zyerman, a technical indicator designed to provide insights into market momentum, volatility, and the trend. In this video, you will get to learn exactly what this indicator is and how you can use it in your trading. Let's get into it. Now, to get started with this indicator, you want to go to TradingView, which is the trading platform that I'm going to be using. If you need to sign up, there's going to be a link in the video description for you to do that. Next, you want to load any trading security that you like in any time frame. For me, I'm going to be using the 15 minute time frame of JPY. Click on indicators and type in dynamic price oscillator. And it's going to be this one by Zyerman. This is a video about this unique indicator known as the Dynamic Price Oscillator, aka the DPO indicator, which was created and published by the TradingView user Zyerman. Now, you may be thinking, but what exactly is it? Well, it's a tool designed to provide insights into market momentum, volatility, and trend strength. One key feature of this indicator is its integration of the Bollinger Bands directly onto the oscillator, offering a unique perspective on market volatility and potential breakout points. If you didn't already know, the Bollinger Bands indicator is primarily used to gauge market volatility. Now, let's break down what the dynamic price oscillator is made of. First, we have the dynamic price oscillator itself, represented by this yellow line traversing the indicator window. This measures the difference between the current closing price and a volatility-adjusted moving average. The result is a smooth line that reacts to price changes, making it easier for traders to identify trends, overbought or oversold conditions, as well as potential reversal points in the market. Now, at the center, we have the dynamic mean, a smooth representation of the average price adjusted for volatility. It serves as a baseline for analyzing the trends. Next, the Bollinger High, represented by this dark green line at the top. This upper boundary highlights overbought conditions based on recent price movements. Above that, we have the expanded Bollinger High, an extended volatility measure that indicates extreme overbought scenarios. Now, on the other side, we have the Bollinger Low, shown as a dark red line just below the dynamic mean. This lower boundary identifies oversold conditions in the market. Now, just beneath it lies the expanded Bollinger Low, an extended volatility measure signaling extreme oversold scenarios. Next, we're going to go over how we can use this indicator to trade. But before we do that, let's take a look at the indicator settings and see how customizable it can be. On the inputs tab, you can see that we have the length. This defines the look back period for the oscillator and the Bollinger Bands calculation. Increasing this value will consider a longer history, potentially smoothing out the oscillator and making the Bollinger Bands wider and wider, leading to fewer signals. On the other hand, decreasing this value will make the oscillator more sensitive to recent price changes. At the same time, the Bollinger Bands will become narrower and narrower, possibly increasing the number of generated signals. For me, I'm going to change the length to 55. The smoothing factor determines how much of the oscillator's calculation is smoothed out. A higher smoothing factor reduces noise and makes the oscillator's line smoother, which may help in identifying the overall trend, but it can delay signal generation. For me, I'm gonna go with a smoothing factor of 10. And then on the style tab, we have several visual options that we can change the color for or even toggle them on or off. For me, I'm going to change the dynamic price oscillator to white. After you've made your changes, click OK. So using this indicator to trade can be broken down into three methodologies, which I mentioned at the beginning of this video. These include momentum, volatility, and trend. Let's start with momentum, and I'm going to explain this with an example of a long position. But before we get into that, how does this indicator identify market momentum? Well, it does so by using the dynamic price oscillator. 
this white line. Sharp movements in the oscillator, especially when it crosses the Bollinger Bands, suggest strong momentum shifts. When the oscillator moves quickly to the upside, crossing above the upper Bollinger Bands, it indicates an increase in bullish momentum. On the other hand, whenever the oscillator moves sharply downwards, crossing below the lower Bollinger Bands, it indicates an increase in bearish momentum. Now, the strategy that takes advantage of this momentum shift is called mean reversion. Now, for a long position, we're going to be looking for an increase in downward momentum, which leads to the oscillator deviating too far from the mean. The mean is represented by the yellow line in the center. Here we have a bearish mean deviation because the oscillator moved too far to the downside due to increased bearish momentum. Now, once this happens, we wait for the price to do a market structure shift by breaking and closing above the most recent swing high, which in our example is this one. After that, we take a long position. The stop loss can be placed under the most recent swing low. The take profit is going to be set at 1.5 times the risk, or you can even exit as soon as the white oscillator touches the upper Bollinger Band. And as you can see, this trade was profitable. And of course, you can do the opposite of this for a short position. Now, while we're still discussing momentum-based trading, the second strategy we can employ is divergence. Now, to take a long position based on divergence, first, the market momentum needs to push prices lower to the point where the oscillator moves outside of the lower Bollinger Band. Once this happens, the oscillator should start moving upward while the price continues to decline. Specifically, the price should establish a new swing low that is lower than the previous low, while the the oscillator should form a swing low that is higher than the previous swing low, creating a bullish divergence. Now, to confirm our entry, we need the price to perform a market structure shift by breaking and closing above the most recent swing high. We take a long position, stop loss just below the most recent swing low, targeting a risk reward ratio of 1 to 1.5, and this trade was profitable. And of course, you can reverse the conditions if you want to take a short position as well. Now, the second method of using this indicator in the market, as mentioned in the beginning of the video, is volatility. We're not going to have a strategy for taking long and short positions based on volatility, except that we can use this indicator to filter out the markets to know when to trade and to know when not to trade. So obviously, you want to trade when the volatility of the market is high enough to push prices and to avoid instances where the market has super low volatility. This indicator identifies volatility using these Bollinger Bands. Whenever these Bollinger Bands get closer and closer together, both the top and the bottom ones, like here, this indicates low volatility in the market, meaning that if you were to take positions here, they may take a long time to hit your targets. So you may want to stay out of the markets during these times. But whenever these bands get wider and wider, like here, that tells you that the volatility of the market is decent or strong enough to push prices. Trading during these times assures you that your trades are going to hit your targets on time. Now, let's go over the third use case of this indicator as mentioned at the beginning of the video, which is trend. This indicator not only identifies the trend direction of the market, but also the strength of the trend. A bullish trend is identified whenever this oscillator is above the mean, like here, Conversely, a bearish trend is going to be identified whenever the oscillator is below the mean, like here. Now, to know the strength of the trend, you just take a look at the relationship between this oscillator and the Bollinger Bands, these two lines at the top and bottom of the indicator. A bullish trend is considered strong enough once this oscillator crosses above the Bollinger High, this dark green line. If it crosses above the extended Bollinger High, this green line at the top, the trend of the market would be considered super strong and the price could even be due for a reversal, and vice versa for bearish trends. Now, to craft a strategy out of this indicator's ability to identify the trend of the market, we need to add an indicator called Swing Support Resistance with Volume, this one by Clarify Chart. This indicator prints swing highs and swing lows directly on the chart and even labels the volume at each swing level. Double click on it to open the indicator settings. On the Inputs tab, you want to change the swing lookback to 5. After that, click OK. 
This adjustment ensures that the indicator waits for at least 5 candles to pass before confirming and printing a new swing high or swing low. Now, to take a long position, the first condition is you want to look for the most recent swing high as printed by the swing support resistance indicator. Ensure the swing high has a volume of at least 1000. In this example, the swing high clearly meets this volume threshold. If the printed level is too short, you want to extend it by drawing a horizontal line at the exact swing high. Condition number two, you want to observe the price action and wait for the price to break and close above the identified swing high. In this example, the price breaks and closes above the swing high, meeting this condition. Next, you want to look at the white oscillator, this line. It must be above the Bollinger high, this dark green line, but it should be below the extended Bollinger high, this bright green line at the top. This position indicates that the trend of the market is strong enough to push prices higher, but not excessively strong which could signal an imminent reversal. All conditions are met, so we take a long position. You want to put your stop loss just below the most recent swing low. The take profit is going to be set at 0.5 times the risk. Now, while this is a negative risk reward ratio, my backtesting results show that the strategy achieves a win rate of over 75%, making it profitable overall. Alternatively, you could use a risk reward ratio of 1 to 1 or 1 to 1.5, but this may require adding extra conditions to maintain profitability. In this particular trade example, the trade was profitable. And of course, for a short position, we're gonna do the opposite of this. Simple. Ladies and gentlemen, remember the strategies presented in this video are not complete trading strategies as they primarily rely on indicators without incorporating key elements like price action, market structure, or discretionary confluences, all of which are critical for consistent profitability. This means that these strategies may perform well for some time and poorly at other times. It's essential to add your own confluences or incorporate these indicators into an existing strategy to enhance your trading approach. Well, that's been it for this video. I really hope you found some value. If you did, remember to leave a like or even consider subscribing to stay tuned. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.